You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Crossing all time. The untimely passing of The King, Elvis Presley, at a young age, left fans across the globe in mourning. The circumstances surrounding his death have been shrouded in mystery for decades, with his family choosing to keep the autopsy results sealed. However, nearly 50 years later, the world is once again rocked by the news that Elvis's tomb has been opened. The revelation of what lies inside is truly remarkable. But why has Elvis Presley's grave been opened? And what do investigators hope to uncover? Join us as we explore this unprecedented event and reveal the truths, falsehoods, and secrets that have been concealed for so long. Let's dive in. Before we jump into the details of Elvis Presley's grave opening and its discoveries, it's important to understand his early life and the journey that led him to become the celebrated legend we all know. Born on January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis Aaron Presley entered the world as the second of two twins. Sadly, his brother Jesse was stillborn, leaving Elvis to grow up as an only child. Despite this loss, Elvis's parents were hardworking, although they struggled financially. This meant that Elvis's early years were characterized by modesty and simplicity. However, his mother made sure that his life was filled with love and music, and their family was deeply religious. What many people may not know is that Elvis's initial exposure to music actually came from the church. The vibrant gospel music he heard during church services had a profound influence on him, shaping his unique musical style that would later captivate the world. Even at a young age, Elvis's voice stood out and he began to gain recognition early on. At just 10 years old, he won a talent show with his rendition of Old Shep, showcasing his budding talent and setting the stage for his future success. After the Presley family moved to Memphis in search of better opportunities, Elvis found himself immersed in the vibrant music scene of Beale Street, the heart of Memphis's musical culture. It was here that he began to develop his signature style, influenced by the diverse sounds surrounding him. At the young age of 11, his mother gifted him his first guitar for his birthday, a pivotal moment that would shape his future. Attending L.C. Humes High School, Elvis stood out from his peers with his slicked-back hair and unique fashion sense, often sporting pink shirts and black slacks. Despite facing bullying for being perceived as a mama's boy, and for his eclectic taste in music, he remained undeterred in pursuing his passion. Participating in talent shows and absorbing every bit of musical knowledge available, Elvis continued to refine his skills. As he progressed through high school, Elvis's talent began to shine even brighter. His performances, such as his rendition of Till I Waltz Again With You at the annual minstrel show, left audiences in awe, showcasing his natural gift for music. With each successful performance, Elvis's confidence grew, laying the foundation for his future as a music icon. After graduating in 1953, Elvis Presley embarked on a journey to pursue his musical dreams. Despite taking on various jobs to make ends meet, he never lost sight of his aspirations. His humble beginnings in Tupelo marked the starting point of his extraordinary rise to fame. It all began with his historic recordings at Sun Records, where his unique fusion of blues, country, and gospel captivated audiences, laying the groundwork for the emergence of rock and roll. With his charismatic stage presence and distinctive voice, Elvis quickly became a symbol of youthful rebellion and a hero to millions. His impact on the music charts was unparalleled, with an astonishing 149 songs appearing on the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart in America. Of these, 114 reached the top 40, 40 reached the top 10, and 18 claimed the number one spot. His number one singles alone spent a total of 80 weeks at the pinnacle of the charts, and his record sales surpassed estimates of over 1 billion worldwide, making him the best-selling solo artist in recorded music history. Elvis's foray into film was equally triumphant, with 31 feature films to his credit, all of which enjoyed financial success. 
he seamlessly transitioned from a music sensation to a bona fide movie star, leaving an indelible mark on both industries. His three network television specials, including the iconic 68 comeback, remain celebrated as some of the most highly rated specials of their time. Specials of Throughout his illustrious career, Elvis garnered numerous accolades, including three Grammy Awards and the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award at the young age of 36. He was also inducted into multiple music halls of fame, spanning genres such as pop, country, rockabilly, rhythm and blues, adult contemporary, and gospel. Despite rarely performing outside the United States, his records and films enjoyed widespread popularity across the globe, solidifying his status as a global cultural phenomenon. Elvis's live performances, particularly his legendary Las Vegas shows and concert tours, broke attendance records and set a standard for live entertainment, unmatched by his contemporaries. His electrifying blend of raw energy and emotional expression left audiences mesmerized, earning him a place in music history as one of the greatest performers of all time. Tragically, on August 16, 1977, the world was stunned by the news of Elvis's untimely death at the age of 42. The announcement sent shockwaves around the globe, leaving fans grieving the loss of a music icon whose legacy continues to resonate to this day. In the wake of Elvis Presley's tragic death, disbelief and mourning gripped the world. The circumstances surrounding his untimely passing have since become the subject of much speculation and intrigue. Elvis was discovered unresponsive on the floor of his bathroom at Graceland, his iconic mansion in Memphis, Tennessee, by his then fiance Ginger Alden. Upon finding him, she immediately called for help, and Elvis was swiftly rushed to Baptist Memorial Hospital. Despite the valiant efforts of the medical team, he was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m. The official cause of Elvis's death was listed as a heart attack. But the autopsy report, conducted by Dr. Jerry Francisco, the Shelby County medical examiner, painted a much more complex picture. It revealed that Elvis had a significantly enlarged heart, weighing almost twice the normal size. This condition, known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, likely played a role in his sudden cardiac arrest. Further revelations came from the toxicology reports, which indicated the presence of several prescription drugs in Elvis's system, including high doses of opiates, barbiturates, and sedatives. Elvis's long-standing addiction to prescription medication was no secret to those close to him. He had been battling addiction for years, often relying on his personal physician, nicknamed Dr. Nick, to provide him with the drugs he craved. Dr. Nick had been prescribing Elvis a shocking array of medications, including Quaaludes and Demerol, in the months leading up to his death. In the period preceding his passing, Elvis's health had been rapidly deteriorating. He had gained a significant amount of weight, and his performances became increasingly erratic. On stage, he would often appear dazed, forgetting lyrics and struggling to keep up with the music. Despite growing concerns about his well-being from his entourage, including his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, intervention seemed elusive. One notable moment in Elvis Presley's career occurred during his iconic 1973 Aloha from Hawaii concert. During the performance of Burning Love, lyric cards were held up for him, a departure from his usual routine. Some fans noted that although the cards were present, Elvis hardly looked at them. However, for many, just having them there served as a safety net, a precaution that Elvis hadn't needed before. This incident sparked debates among fans, with some attributing it to substance abuse, speculation often linked to Elvis, while others saw it as a long-standing quirk of his. Supporters of the latter view pointed to the 68 comeback special, where Elvis also struggled to remember the lyrics to his own songs. This challenge seemed to be something he had dealt with throughout his career. However, when he forgot lyrics, Elvis would often inject humor and engage the audience, turning potential mishaps into endearing interactions. Similarly, in 1970, during a live show in Vegas, 
he needed help keeping up with several songs and relied on sheet music to do so. These moments, though showcasing his vulnerability, also highlighted his authenticity and relatability to his audience. On the day Elvis passed away, he had been awake all night, struggling to sleep. Throughout the evening and into the early hours of the morning, he had taken multiple doses of prescribed medications. Around 2.30 a.m., he retired to the bathroom, where he often spent extended periods reading. It was there, several hours later, that his fiancée, Ginger, found him unconscious on the floor. The news of Elvis's death sent shockwaves not only through the music industry but also beyond. Fans worldwide entered a state of mourning, holding candlelight vigils and leaving flowers at the gates of Graceland. The media frenzy was intense with reporters and photographers flocking to Memphis to cover the story. To co In the weeks and months following Elvis's passing, questions arose about the circumstances surrounding his death. Many fans found it hard to accept that their idol could have succumbed to something as ordinary as a heart attack. Rumors began circulating about possible foul play or a cover-up, adding to the mystery surrounding his untimely demise. In the years following Elvis's death, many of those closest to him have come forward to share insights into his final days. Friends and family members have painted a picture of a man deeply troubled, grappling with addiction, depression, and the immense pressures of fame. His struggle with these issues was evident, leaving those around him deeply concerned about his well-being. After Elvis's passing, his personal physician, often referred to as Dr. Nick, found himself thrust into a whirlwind of legal and professional turmoil. His professional life took a dramatic turn as he became embroiled in legal proceedings related to his prescription practices. In 1980, Dr. Nick faced indictment on 14 counts of overprescribing drugs, not only to Elvis, but also to other high-profile figures like Jerry Lee Lewis and numerous patients. Despite the seriousness of the charges, Dr. Nick was ultimately acquitted. However, the legal scrutiny did not end there. The Tennessee Medical Board took action, delivering a shocking blow to the medical community by permanently revoking his medical license. This decision was based on findings that Dr. Nick had been overprescribing medication to patients for years, raising significant concerns about his medical judgment and ethical practices. Dr. Nick's life was also marked by a bizarre and frightening incident in 1979 when he was shot in the chest while watching a football game. Miraculously, he escaped serious injury, but the incident remained shrouded in mystery as no suspect was ever arrested. Speculation swirled that the shooting could have been the work of an angry Elvis fan, adding another layer of intrigue to the already complex narrative surrounding the king's legacy. Elvis's burial was a grand and emotional affair, befitting the king of rock and roll. He was laid to rest at the Meditation Garden at Graceland, his iconic mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. The garden, a serene and beautiful place that Elvis often visited for reflection and solace, provided a fitting final resting place for the music icon. The burial ceremony took place on August 18, 1977, just two days after his untimely death. It was a private affair, attended by family, close friends, and a select few from within the industry. Despite its private nature, thousands of devoted fans gathered outside the gates of Graceland to pay their respects and bid farewell to their beloved music idol. The meditation garden was adorned with floral arrangements, including a stunning array of red roses, Elvis's favorite flower. The centerpiece was a magnificent fountain, serving as a poignant backdrop for the somber occasion, where memories of Elvis's life and legacy were honored and celebrated amidst the outpouring of grief and love from fans around the world. Elvis's casket was a testament to his legendary status, crafted from solid copper and lined with velvet. The service itself was a moving tribute, filled with heartfelt eulogies and musical performances, Reverend C.W. Bradley, who had officiated Elvis and Priscilla's wedding just years earlier, led the ceremony.
Family members and close friends shared their cherished memories and expressed their love for the fallen star. Gospel singers, including J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet, delivered stirring renditions of Elvis's favorite hymns, their voices filling the air with a sense of hope and celebration amidst the sorrow. As the ceremony drew to a close, Elvis's casket was solemnly lowered into the ground, marking his final resting place. Today, visitors to Graceland pay their respects at the Meditation Garden, where Elvis rests alongside his parents, Vernon and Gladys, and his grandmother, Minnie May. However, recent whispers have reignited interest in the legendary singer's final resting place. Rumors suggest that Elvis Presley's tomb may be opened, sparking a frenzy of speculation and excitement among fans and theorists alike. The origin of the rumor remains as mysterious as the king himself, taking on a life of its own, much like the man at its center. It seems to have emerged from online forums, with some suggesting that Elvis's family has plans to unveil the secrets of his final resting place. The idea of gaining insight into the private life of such a public figure has sent ripples of anticipation through the Elvis-loving community. While it's unclear who first mentioned the possibility of the tomb's opening, once the idea took hold, it spread rapidly across forums and online Elvis communities, fueling speculation and curiosity in a collective frenzy. But what could be sparking rumors like this? Some contend that Elvis actually faked his own death. Supporters of this idea point to several pieces of evidence. One of the most compelling is the discrepancies surrounding his tombstone. His middle name, Aaron, is curiously spelled as Aaron on the grave marker. Proponents argue that this could be a subtle clue left by Elvis himself to indicate that his burial was not legitimate. Another piece of alleged evidence is the sighting of Elvis in the background of an airport scene in the 1990 movie Home Alone. The scene in question is a bustling airport setting where the mother, played by Catherine O'Hara, is frantically negotiating for a flight home. Standing behind her is a figure clad in a turtleneck and sports coat with a bearded appearance. This figure has been at the center of speculation. His presence is subtle yet intriguing, standing just over O'Hara's left shoulder. The man's features bear a striking resemblance to what many would expect an older Elvis to look like. His eyes, the contour of his face, and even his stance evoke a sense of familiarity that aligns with the king of rock and roll's iconic visage. The beard in the alleged Elvis sighting is drawing significant attention. It's thick, well-groomed, and covers much of his lower face, a departure from the clean-cut image usually associated with Elvis. Some speculate that this could be a deliberate choice to disguise himself or simply a fashion statement of the background extra. Adding to the intrigue is the man's body language. He exudes a certain impatience and silent discontent with the unfolding situation. This nuanced detail adds depth to the scene, fueling the theory further. His mannerisms reflect those of a former star now relegated to the background. His attire, comprising a sports coat and turtleneck, is reminiscent of the timeless choices Elvis was known to favor. These clothing choices evoke a specific era and style that align with Elvis's aesthetic, enhancing the theory's allure. Handwriting analysis has also contributed to the speculation surrounding Elvis's alleged death hoax. Some experts claim that signatures attributed to Elvis in the years following his reported death differ significantly from his earlier ones. This raises questions about whether someone else may have been signing on his behalf to perpetuate the illusion of his demise. The circumstances surrounding Elvis's funeral have sparked speculation among believers in the theory that he faked his death. Despite being a revered public figure, the funeral was relatively small and conducted as a private affair. His body was placed in a 900 Lel B copper coffin, a detail that some find peculiar. Critics argue that such a heavy coffin would be unnecessary unless it was meant to conceal the absence of a body. Additionally, skeptics highlight the swift nature of the funeral proceedings, which occurred soon after his reported death was announced. 
prompting questions about whether the haste was intended to avoid scrutiny. In the years following Elvis's alleged death, numerous individuals have come forward with claims of having seen him alive and well. These sightings have become a cultural phenomenon, with people from various parts of the world asserting that they encountered the icon in person. The prevalence of these accounts adds fuel to the speculation surrounding Elvis's fate and contributes to the enduring mystery surrounding his legacy. The very first reported sighting of Elvis after his alleged death was as mysterious as it was timely. It occurred just a day after his passing when a man bearing a striking resemblance to the late singer purportedly purchased a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires using the alias John Burrow, a name known to be associated with Elvis. This sighting immediately ignited a frenzy of speculation and further sightings, each more intriguing than the last. Fast forward to the end of 1977, and a photograph surfaced, purportedly taken by a visitor to Graceland. The image appeared to capture Elvis lounging in his pool house. The debate over the identity of the figure in the photo continues to this day, with some fervently believing that it depicts Elvis Presley himself. This photograph, along with the initial sighting, has added layers to the ongoing mystery surrounding Elvis's purported death and subsequent sightings. In the 1980s, Kalamazoo, Michigan, emerged as a hotspot for Elvis sightings, captivating the town with whispers of the king being alive and well, casually navigating life as if he had never left the limelight. These reported sightings fueled the fervor of Elvis enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists alike, who eagerly speculated about the possibility of the legendary singer staging his own death. Adding to the intrigue was a mysterious phone call in 1988, where a voice strikingly similar to Elvis's claimed that the king was not only alive but also gearing up for a comeback. While the authenticity of the call remains dubious, it injected fresh energy into the ongoing debate surrounding Elvis's supposed demise, propelling the conspiracy theories to new heights. As the sightings persisted, they took on increasingly surreal dimensions, permeating even into the realm of music. In 1988, a song titled Spelling on the Stone surfaced, credited to an anonymous artist. Many listeners were convinced that the voice behind the song was none other than Elvis himself, either singing from beyond the grave or from a clandestine hideout, where he remained very much alive. This musical release only served to deepen the enigma surrounding Elvis's alleged death and the possibility of his continued existence. As the new millennium dawned, Elvis's sightings continued to captivate the public imagination, with reports surfacing from unexpected places like the grand opening of California's Legoland. While it was later disclosed that impersonators had been hired for the event, the initial buzz surrounding Elvis's alleged appearance sent waves of excitement through his devoted fan base. Even publications like the Weekly World News tabloid seized on these sightings, spinning elaborate tales of Elvis's post-1977 adventures. According to these narratives, Elvis embarked on a globe-trotting odyssey, masterminding his own death to escape the relentless glare of fame and reinvent himself in anonymity. Supporters of the theory pointed to supposed clues hidden in his music and album artwork, suggesting that Elvis left behind a trail of breadcrumbs for astute fans to follow. Songs like I'll Never Know and Way Down were scrutinized for lyrics that could be interpreted as veiled references to his vanishing act. Album covers also came under scrutiny, with Elvis's attire and poses dissected for deeper meanings. The cover of Promised Land, featuring Elvis in a resplendent white suit, was interpreted by some as a symbolic depiction of his transcendence to a higher realm beyond the reach of mortal eyes. Fueling the speculation were lingering questions about the circumstances of Elvis's death. His body, found in an unusual position with pajama bottoms around his ankles, raised eyebrows, and fueled theories of foul play or staged scenes. 
Some alleged discrepancies in the autopsy report and suspicions of suppressed toxicology results only added to the air of mystery surrounding the king's final days. Elvis Presley's life was a spectacle, akin to the dazzling costumes he adorned on stage. Imagine the rush of stepping into the spotlight, an act of defiance against a world that scrutinized his every move. For someone like Elvis, faking his death might have seemed like the ultimate act of liberation, a chance to escape the relentless gaze of fame and the constant pressure of public life. The notion of disappearing from the public eye held a potent allure for Elvis, who lived under the unyielding scrutiny of fans and media alike. It offered the promise of privacy, the opportunity to savor the simple joys of anonymity. No more paparazzi, no more intrusive headlines. Just the freedom to stroll down the street without attracting attention. Financial considerations may have also played a role in Elvis's hypothetical decision to stage his own death. The burdens of wealth and fame, managers, agents, extravagant expenses, could have weighed heavily on him. Faking his death might have presented an escape from the financial constraints and expectations that accompanied his stardom, offering a chance to shed the trappings of celebrity and embrace a simpler, more financially secure existence. The prospect of a grand comeback adds another layer to the intrigue surrounding Elvis's alleged faked death. In an industry fueled by sensationalism and dramatic narratives, the return of the king from beyond the grave would be the stuff of legend, a historic moment that would reverberate through the annals of entertainment history. The burden of maintaining a legendary status can be immense, especially for an icon like Elvis. Perhaps he sought to safeguard his legacy from the ravages of time and changing musical tastes. By orchestrating his own death, he could ensure that his image remained frozen in time, forever immune to the effects of aging and the evolution of popular culture. From a human perspective, the desire for control is a powerful motivator. In a life where Elvis often found himself at the mercy of external forces, be it the relentless scrutiny of the public eye or the demands of his career, faking his death could represent the ultimate act of agency. It would be a decision entirely his own, a clandestine maneuver that allowed him to reclaim control over his own narrative and bid farewell to the world on his own terms. Elvis Presley's enduring legacy extends far beyond his music. It's a cultural phenomenon that has taken on a life of its own, fueled by a dedicated fan base whose devotion knows no bounds. For many, being an Elvis fan isn't just about enjoying his music. It's a way of life. One of the most remarkable manifestations of this devotion is the Elvis tribute artist, ETA, phenomenon. These enthusiasts spare no expense in recreating the king's iconic look and sound donning elaborate jumpsuits and meticulously styling their hair to embody his larger-than-life persona, competitions and contests abound, where ETAs are judged not only on their vocal prowess, but also on their ability to channel Elvis's charisma and stage presence. In addition to live performances and contests, the digital age has given rise to virtual communities where fans can connect and share their passion for all things Elvis. These online forums serve as hubs for sharing rare concert footage, engaging in spirited discussions about his impact on their lives, and even role-playing as Elvis in virtual scenarios. For some fans, collecting Elvis memorabilia is a cherished pastime. From vintage records and concert posters to rare artifacts and collectible figurines, these enthusiasts spare no expense in amassing their prized possessions. Some go so far as to dedicate entire rooms, or even entire homes, to showcasing their impressive collections, transforming their living spaces into veritable shrines to the king of rock and roll. Elvis Presley's influence extends even into the realm of body art, where fans express their devotion through permanent ink. Elvis fan tattoos serve as a lifelong tribute to the king of rock and roll, with enthusiasts proudly displaying his image song lyrics, or even his signature etched into their skin. From subtle designs adorning wrists and ankles to elaborate full-body pieces, these tattoos serve as a badge of honor for true fans, 
marking them as dedicated members of the Elvis community. But the Elvis fandom doesn't stop with tattoos. It extends to our furry friends as well. Enter the Elvis lookalike pets trend, where devoted fans go the extra mile to style their beloved companions in homage to the king himself. Hound dogs, in particular, take center stage in this quirky twist on fandom as owners outfit them in miniature Elvis costumes complete with tiny wigs and sunglasses. These dapper pups often steal the show at fan gatherings and parades, delighting onlookers with their uncanny resemblance to the legendary rocker. Whether adorned in ink or dressed to the nines, Elvis fans find endless ways to celebrate their idol's legacy and style. At Graceland, Elvis Presley's legendary estate in Memphis, Tennessee, fans can embark on a journey through the king's lavish lifestyle, both on the ground and in the air. One of the highlights of the Graceland tour is the opportunity to step aboard two of Presley's custom jets, the Lisa Marie and the Hound Dog 2. The Lisa Marie, also known as the Flying Graceland and Hound Dog Wine, is a Convair 880 meticulously preserved to showcase the luxury and opulence that defined Elvis's private travel. Visitors can explore the interior, which boasts a master bedroom, living room, conference room, and two half baths. Every detail reflects Elvis's extravagant taste, from gold-plated seatbelts to plush suede sofas, providing a glimpse into the king's life of luxury on the go. Adjacent to the Lisa Marie is the Hound Dog 2, a Lockheed jet star capable of seating 10 passengers. This jet offers another opportunity for fans to immerse themselves in Elvis's world of glamour and sophistication. But the Elvis experience doesn't end with the jets. At the Elvis Presley Automobile Museum, located in Graceland Plaza, visitors can marvel at more than 20 cars owned by the king himself. Highlights include his iconic pink Cadillac and the sleek Stutz Blackhawk, offering a fascinating glimpse into Elvis's passion for luxury vehicles and classic automobiles. Whether exploring his custom jets or admiring his impressive car collection, a visit to Graceland promises an unforgettable journey into the life and legacy of the one and only Elvis Presley. Graceland's influence extends far beyond its gates, shaping the music industry and even attracting some unexpected visitors over the years. One notable tribute to the iconic estate is Paul Simon's Grammy-winning album, Graceland, which was inspired by a spontaneous trip to Memphis. Simon revealed that the album's title track, Graceland, was born out of a simple yet profound experience during his visit to the estate. Initially, he couldn't shake the line, I'm going to Graceland, from his mind, using it as a placeholder while working on new material. However, the phrase stuck with him, prompting him to make an impromptu trip to Memphis to see Graceland for himself. Graceland Despite not seeking any special treatment, Simon waited in line like any other visitor and embarked on the Graceland tour. He admitted to feeling underwhelmed by the experience at first, until a poignant moment outside Elvis's grave moved him to tears. Reading the inscription honoring Elvis's musical legacy, Simon was overcome with emotion, and the profound reverence he observed among fellow visitors inspired him to channel his feelings into music. As he reflected on the pilgrimage-like atmosphere surrounding Graceland, the lyrics of Graceland began to flow effortlessly, capturing the essence of his experience. While Simon's visit to Graceland was a deeply personal and emotional journey, the estate has also attracted its fair share of unconventional guests. In 1976, rock and roll legend Jerry Lee Lewis made headlines when he was arrested outside the mansion in the early hours of the morning, allegedly causing a disturbance while brandishing a Derringer pistol. Similarly, in 1975, Bruce Springsteen attempted to pay an unauthorized visit to Graceland, scaling a wall and making a dash toward the mansion in hopes of meeting the king himself. However, security promptly intervened, escorting Springsteen off the premises before he could fulfill his starstruck mission. These incidents serve as colorful footnotes in Graceland's storied history, adding to its allure as a cultural icon and pilgrimage site for music enthusiasts worldwide.
As we reflect on the enduring legacy of Elvis Presley and the mystique surrounding his final resting place, one question lingers. What do you think lies at the heart of the rumors and fascination surrounding Elvis's alleged death and potential reappearance? Join the conversation in the comments below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content on the latest developments. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.